so good morning all we are continuing with the week number 2 that is arrays and pointers we are in today's lecture we are going to learn about pointers what are pointers declaring a pointer how to declare a pointer that we are going to see then the pointer operators pointer assignments how to do the assignments how to do the arithmetic operations on the pointer then how to compare different pointers and we have just we are going to see pointers and arrays an array of pointers at the end pointer to pointer and followed by question answer session and doubt clearing session so any to good to write a good program you need to understand the pointer concept clearly the correct correct understanding and use of pointers is critical to successful c and c++ programming so you need to understand and use pointers in efficient and clear way this is one of the skill you will need to acquire to write a good c and c++ programs there are three reasons for this why you need to understand and use pointers in c++ first pointers provide the means by which function can modify their calling arguments if you want to modify the calling arguments you need to pass it using the pointers second pointer support dynamic allocation we have seen new and delete operator these are the way to do the dynamic allocation third pointers can improve the efficiency of certain routines if you want to increase the efficiency of certain procedures you can make use of pointers to improve the efficiency of that particular routine as we know every variable is a memory location and every memory location has its address define which can be accessed using the ampersand this ampersand operator which denotes an address in memory so this is a simple code snippet which will show how to display the address of variable so in this code inside the main we will have one variable name of the variable is integer variable 1 and we have another variable of type character character variable 2 of size 10 it's an array of character so if you want to print the address of variable 1 variable you can use this address of operator with the help of this address of operator you can print the address of variable 1 similarly if you want to print the address of variable 2 you can make use of address variable address operator address and then name of the variable that is variable 2 so this statement will print the address of variable 2 and this statement will print the address of variable 1 this operator is called as address of operator which will print the address of that particular variable so this is the way to print the which is already defined over here it is just repetition of the important lines 
address of variable one will be printed by this address variable one and address of variable two will be printed by this address variable two. So next is what are pointers? A pointer is a variable that holds a memory address. Pointer is a is a variable that holds a memory address. Keep in mind, it is used to hold the memory address. Again, it is one type of variable which will holds a memory address. This address is the location of another object, typically another variable in memory. The pointer in C++ language is a variable. It is also known as locator or indicator that points to an address of a value. Again, same concept in different words. The pointer in C++ language is a variable and it is known as locator. It is called, also called as locator or it is also called as indicator that points to an address of a value. For example, if one variable contains the address of another variable, the first variable is said to point to second. So it is illustrated in the next figure. I have taken it from the book. So this figure shows, this is the continuous memory locations. These are the memory addresses, 1000, 1001, 2 and 3 and so on, and so on. So this is the pointer variable, which holds the address of this memory location. So this is called as pointer. Pointer will hold the address of another variable. Similar concept I will explain with another simple diagram so that you will understand in better way. So this is the pointer variable and which will hold the address of another variable. Every variable is stored in the memory and that memory will consist the address and that address will be hold by this pointer variable. Okay, so I am going to explain this. Before that, see the advantages of pointer. Pointer reduces the code and improves the performance. Pointer reduces the code and improves the performance. It is used to retrieve strings, trees, etc., and used with arrays, structure, and functions. So one of the advantage of pointer is to it will improve the performance of the program. We can return multiple values from function using the pointer. We can return multiple values from function using the pointer. It makes you able to access any memory location in computer's memory. It makes you able to access any memory location in the computer's memory. It's one, it's very important thing. With the help of pointers, we can access any memory location. So what are the uses of pointers? There are many uses of the pointers in C++. It is used for dynamic memory allocation that we have already covered what is called a dynamic memory allocation. Next, it is used in arrays, it is used in functions, and it is used in structures. Pointers in C++ language are widely used in arrays, function, and structures. It reduces the code and improves the performance of the system. So that's why 
pointers are used to improve the performance of the system. So these are the basic notations that you need to understand. This ampersand sign. What is this ampersand sign? The name is called. It is called as address operator. It is called as address operator. What does it mean? It determines the address of a variable. It will determine the address of a variable. Next is asterisk sign. So what is the use of this symbol? It indicates in indirection operator. The name of this operator is called as indirection operator. What is the use of this operator? It access the value of an address. It will access the value of an address. Keep in mind. So this address, it is this ampersand is called as address operator, whereas this is called as indirection operator. Okay. So simply in simple words, it is uh, this address operator is called as address of, and this star indicates value of. Okay, or value at. Sometimes it is called as value at. It is called as this ampersand is called as address of. So these are the basic uses of this two operators. So how to declare a pointer? If a variable is going to hold the pointer, it must be declared as such. A pointer declaration consists of base type and the asterisk and the variable name. So, general form of the declaring pointer variable is this type, star, and then name. By looking at this star, will compiler will come to know that it's a pointer variable. This type is nothing but any data type. It could be float, it could be integer, it could be double, etc. This name is the name given to the pointer. This name given to the pointer. So this is the way to declare the pointer variable in C++ language. So pointers in C++ language can be declared using this asterisk symbol as we have seen just now. So these are the examples of creating the pointers. Integer star A, it is pointer to integer. Character star C, it is called as pointer to character. Double star DP, it is called as pointer to double. Float star FP that is pointer to float. So you can mention any type of pointers. For example, you can mention integer star roll number as a pointer. Roll number like this. You can create any type of pointer variable. And this star is used for declaring the pointer variable. So this is the way to declare the pointers. Now I am going to demonstrate this so that you will get the better idea. So is this uh, screen visible and the uh, code is readable? Anyone? Yes, sir. Okay. So what I have written in this code, inside the main, I have mentioned one integer variable. 
integer number is equal to 30, which is initialized to 30. And then I have created the pointer integer star p. This is the way to declare the pointers. Pointer variable. And you can store the address of number into the P. How to store the address of number into the P? You have to mention P is equal to address of operator and then name of the variable that you want to store. That's address you want to store in the pointer variable P. So this statement will store the address of number variable to the pointer variable p. Again, I am repeating so that you will have clear understanding. This is the variable integer number is equal to 30. It's a normal variable that we have declared and initialize it to 30. Next is we have declared one pointer variable integer star p. What is the use of this pointer variable? <coughs> Sorry. The pointer variable will hold the address of another variable. So to hold the address, you need to write this statement. How to write the statement? P is equal to address of number. So this statement will store the address of P variable. Address, sorry, address of number variable into the P pointer variable P. Now see, see what address of number variable is. Address of number variable is address of number. Just mention this address operator, it will print the num address of this number. Next, see what address of P variable is address of p variable is just mention p and value of p variable is you have to mention star p this call as value at operator and just see the output here it is address of number variable is this is the number, this is the address hexadecimal number on which the number variable is stored. Then address of P variable or content of P variable is this address that is a number variable. And value of P is 30 that is P is pointing to number variable and number is having the value. 30. So this is the way to represent the pointer. Initialize the pointer with some memory variable and you can print the addresses along with the values of the that pointer. So continuing with this. Next is pointer operators. There are two special pointer operators, star and address of operator. Star and address of operator. These are the two pointer operators. This address is unary operator that returns the memory address of its operand. This address is unary operator that returns the address of its operand. Remember that unary operator only requires one operand. Okay, this unary operator only requires one operand. 
For example, if you say m is equal to address of count, so address of count will be stored in the variable m. It places into the m the address, memory address of the variable count. This address is the computer's internal location of, a, of the variable. Keep in mind this address is computer's internal location of the variable which is stored in the m variable. It has nothing to do with the value of the count. Keep in mind, it will only store the address of count. It will not store the address of value at count. We can think of address as returning the address of. We can think of this address operator as returning the address of. Mostly this is called as address of operator. Therefore, preceding assignment statement means M receives the address of count. This statement means M receives the address of count. So suppose this is the count variable which considers the value 100 and assume that its location or memory address is 2000. Again, I am repeating this is your count variable which value consists 100 and it, the count variable's memory address is 2000. And if you mention m is equal to address of count, the m will receive the address of this count variable means it will look like this. Now m will hold the address of count that is 200. That is 200. This will be hold by this m variable. This will be hold by m variable. So this is the way this address of operator is used to store the address of one variable into the another variable. Now proceeding to next, the second operator is asterisk that is star and it is the complement of address operator. Again, it is a unary operator that returns the value at the address that follows. So it will store the value at that particular location. Just see with the help of example, if m counts the memory address of the count variable, so you can write the statement like this, q is equal to value at m. q is equal to value at m. This star indicates value at and assume that m contains the memory address of the variable count that we have seen just now. Now, this statement will place the value of count into the queue. It places the value of count into the queue. So whatever this m points to that particular variable's value will be stored in this queue. The queue will have the value 100 because 100 is stored at the location 2000, which is the memory address that was stored in M. So you can think of star as at address. At address. In this case, the preceding statement means Q receives the value at address M. Q receives the value at address M. Yeah. Now just see with the help of diagram how it will look like. Suppose this is your count variable. Value of count variable is 100 
and its memory location is 2000. Now I'm going to apply this statement. M is equal to count address of count. So address of count will be stored in the M and it will look like this. This is stored in this M variable. Now our statement is this. M Q is equal to star M. At address M. It will store the value at address M. Again I am repeating this statement means value at m value at m means m will hold the address of 2000 and 2000 will hold the value 100 and this 100 value is stored in the queue it will not store this 2000 because it's a memory address and this is the value at operator value at that particular address so what is the value of value at address m value at address m is 2000 memory address and at the 2000 memory address value is 100 so q will hold this 100 value And diagrammatically, it will look like this. Now Q will hold the value 100. So this Q receives the value at address M. Q will receive the value at address M. I will explain this with the help of demonstration so that you will get the clear idea. So is this screen is visible and the MI audible properly? Anyone? Yes. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. So Just see this code. Inside this code, we have variable this count. And we have just initialized this 200. And we have one memory location. We have created one pointer variable integer star m for First of all, we are going to learn about the address of operator. We'll keep it aside. So just we have created one integer variable count, initialize it to 100. And in the inside, we have created one other pointer variable integer star m. It's a pointer variable. It will hold the address of another variable. With the help of this statement, it will hold the address of count variable into the M. M is equal to address of count. M is equal to address of count. Now, your printed value of M variable is M. And just see what is the output. value of m variable is this that is the address of address of this count address of this count just, just we have seen in this example this will hold this m will hold the address of this count we have assumed that the, our address is 2000 so this m will hold the 2000. 
so here it is this memory address is taken from the system and it could be any number it could be any hexadecimal number in our case this is the address this is the address value of m variable is 0x69f e8 it's a hexadecimal memory address of count variable now i'm going to declare one integer variable q and what i'm going to use i'm going to use <coughs> address uh, value at operator q is equal to star m so this star m means it will hold the value of m which is pointed to that particular memory location and then it is initialized to q and then i am going to print the value at q variable is that is this q and just see the output it will print the value at q variable is 100 value at q variable is 100 understood anyone yes anyone the many are you there arti yes sir understood understood yes sir okay fine so this is all about the uh, operators asterisk and address of operator now, now we are going to learn about pointer assignments as with any variable you may use pointers on the right hand side of an assignment assignment statement to assign its value to another pointer for example this is our simple code in this code we'll have one uh, integer variable x and two pointer variables star p1 and star p2 of type integer and p1 is equal to address of x P1 will hold the address of X. And this is called as pointer assignment. This is called as pointer assignments. P2 is equal to P1. P2 is equal to P1. So this statement will hold the address of P1. P2 is now pointing to P1. And P1 is pointing to x so it will print the value of address of x that is p2 so instead of printer we are just mention see out you will get the same output just make the changes in the code then return of the main and just see diagrammatically how it will look like both p1 and p2 now points to x because of this assignment operator both the pointers are pointing to the x variable so suppose this is our x variable value of x is 100 and its memory address is 2000 assume that this is the memory address wherein this x variable's 
memory is allocated and we, which we store the value 100. Now, star P1 will store the value of address of X. When you say, just uh, just forward this about 100 here, there is no 100 here. Once you say P1 is equal to address of X. Once we say P1 is equal to address of X. Now in this P1 of point of pointer variable which we store the address of X. And address of X is nothing but this value that is 200. And which is stored in this P1. This is stored in this P1. Once we say P2 is equal to P1, this is called as a pointer assignment operator. Pointer assignment. You can do this. Simply what is the meaning of this is P2 is equal to P1. P1 will assign to P2. Now P2 is pointing to P1. This P2 will hold the value of P1, nothing but this address. And once this address is hold by P2, P2 is pointing to this X. So once we say P1 is equal to address of X, this P1 pointer will point to this X. And once you say P2 is equal to P1, this P2 is pointing to P1 and indirectly P1 will point to this X. Now P2 will hold the value 200. This will directly point to X. This will directly point to X. This P1 will point to X and P2 will point to the same member location that is X. This is the way you can do this called as pointer assignment. This is called as pointer assignment. So moving forward, pointer arithmetic. There are only two arithmetic operators operations that you can use on pointers. First one is addition and next one is subtraction. These two arithmetic operator operations you can perform on the pointers addition and subtraction. To understand what occurs in pointer arithmetic, let P1 be an integer pointer with the current value of 2000. Now P1 will hold the value 2000. And its type is what? It's an integer pointer. Okay, just remember it's an integer pointer. Size of integer is 2 bytes. Also assume that integer are 2 bytes long. Okay. Then after the expression P1 plus plus. This is called as addition operation. P1 plus plus that is increment incrementation increment of p1 so it will increment the value of p1 by next to next element so p1 contains 2002 not 2001 because the size of the integer type is 2 bytes size of the integer Pointer is two bytes. So it will P1. Once you do this, P1 will consist the value 2002. The reason for this is that each time P1 is incremented, it will point to the next integer. 
So it will point to the next integer. And we have assumed that here value of integer is two bytes long. So it will point to the next. It will skip two point two bytes and it will point to the next. That is 2002. And it is same for the true for the decrements. For example, assume that P1 has the value 2000 and the expression P1 minus minus. Once you do this P1 minus minus and P1 is now pointing to this 2000. Now, once you do minus, it will point to 1998. P1 causes P1 to have the value 1998. So generalizing from the preceding example, the following rules govern pointer arithmetic. Each time a pointer is incremented, it points to the memory location next to elements of its based base type. It points to the next memory location. Keep in mind. Similarly, each time it is decremented, it points to the location of the previous element of its base type. So this is how you can do the pointer arithmetic. You can do the pointer arithmetic addition and subtraction. So you are not limited to the increment and decrement operators. For example, you may add or subtract integers to or from pointers. For example, once you say P1 is equal to P1 plus 12. P1 is equal to P1 plus 12. It is valid operation. So this P1 will point to the 12th element after this P1. It makes P1 point to the 12th element of P1's type behind the one it currently points to. So suppose P1 is pointing to the first element, currently pointing to the suppose Jorath element. After this expression, P1 will point to the 12th location. P1 will point to the 12th location. Next is pointer comparison. You can compare two pointers in a relational expression. For instance, given two pointers P1, P and Q, the following statement is perfectly valid. What is the statement? Just see. If P1 is less than Q, If P1 is less than Q, this P points to lower memory than Q. P points to lower memory than Q, and this expression is valid. Both the pointers are of type. Uh, both the both are pointer types. You can do this comparison operator. Comparison operation. Generally, pointer comparisons are used when two or more pointers pointing to a common object such as an array. It is mostly used when you deal with the array. To check whether that particular element is pointing to the lower memory or to the higher memory location. So this is the way you can use comparison operator operations among the pointers. Next is pointers and arrays. Pointers and arrays. There is close relationship between pointers and arrays. Consider this program fragment. This is the character string str size is 80 and this is the character pointer star p1 star p1 next once we say p1 is equal to str p1 is equal to str 
it will hold the address of str into the variable p1 this address of operator here it is optional when the same there is address of operator it will store the address of str into the p1 and uh, you are familiar with every array will starts from the zeroth location so this p1 will point to the first element in the array index here p1 has been set to the address of the first array element in str suppose you want to access the fifth fifth element in str you can you could write str4 this is the way you can access the fifth element with the help of this str variable or with the help of pointer how will you write <clears throat> just simply mention star in the bracket p1 plus 4 p1 plus 4 this will store uh, sorry this will access the fifth element of an array with the help of this statement this p1 is pointing to this str and with this p1 plus 4 means you are incrementing the p1 pointer by four times it will point to the fifth element and this star indicates its value at fifth position the value at fifth position is nothing but your yes, star fourth location whatever value you are having will be retrieved both the statements will return the fifth element remember array starts at 0 next arrays of pointers pointers may be arrayed like any other data type that is the declaration of integer pointer array of size 10 is like this integer star x 10 this indicates that you have created array of pointers you have created array of pointers how compiler will come to know that it's an array of pointers this square bracket indicates it is an array whereas this asterisk indicates that it is a pointer the combination of these two are nothing but array of pointers combination of these two are nothing but the array of pointers and this is the way you can declare array of pointers to assign the address of integer variable call where to the third element of the pointer array we can write like this x2 which will point to the third element and wherein we have stored a value of variable var address of where will be stored in the third position of vx to find the value of where we can write value at x2 value at x2 which will access the value at location 2 nothing but it will find the value of variable var so this is the way to declare the array of pointers you can store n number of values in this integer array and you can create any type of array integer character float or you can create any type of pointers integer float character and so on every type of data type is present that type of data type pointers you can create as we have seen in the initial stage now moving forward 
मल्टीपल इन डायरेक्शन और सिंपली पॉइंटर टू पॉइंटर सो इन दिस दिस इज कॉल्ड एज सिंगल इन डायरेक्शन दिस कॉल्ड एज सिंगल इन डायरेक्शन पॉइंटर दिस इज द पॉइंटर वेरिएबल व्हिच विल होल्ड द एड्रेस ऑफ दिस वेरिएबल एंड इट इज पॉइंटिंग टू दिस वेरिएबल इट इज पॉइंटिंग टू दिस वेरिएबल this call as single in direction next is it is called as multi in direction this pointer will point to this pointer and this pointer is point to this pointer and indirectly this pointer will point to this in location this is called as pointer to pointer this is called as pointer to pointer a variable that is pointer to pointer must be declared as such to do this by placing an additional asterisk in front of the variable name for example the following declaration tells the compiler that new balance is a pointer to pointer of type float and this is the way. <coughs> this is the way to declare this pointer to pointer variable float double star this double star nothing but the pointer to pointer variable and then new balance is the name of the variable you should understand that new balance is not a pointer to a floating point number but rather pointer to float pointer keep in mind it's pointer to pointer to access the right value indirectly point it to by a pointer to pointer you must apply the asterisk operator twice as in this example so this is the code wherein we will have one variable of integer type that is x and two variables two pointers one is star p and second is pointer to pointer double star p so this x we store 100 sorry 10 and this statement we store the address of x into p and this we store the address of p into q and say out value of x is equal to the star star q with the help of q you can access the value of x at the end it will return 0 so i will demonstrate this with the help of example code so that you will have better idea is this screen visible anyone yes sir okay so this is the one assignment operator just we will finish this and then we will see the next program so in this assignment operator what we have done here we have one variable integer x and we have two pointer variables integer pointer v integer star p1 and star p2 and this statement p1 is equal to address of x will hold this p1 will hold the address of x and this statement is called as assignment operator which will point which will assign this p1 address to p2 now it p2 will consist the address present in p1 and p1 will has the address of x means p1 p2 is pointing to x and just see address of address of x is equal to p2 just see the output so 
So address of X is equal to this 0x69f ee4. Every time this address could be a different uh, because this is a defined by the system and every, on every computer it will be a different or every execution time it will be a different. To simply know there will be one address or two different addresses in P1 and P2 just see address of X is equal to P1. I have mentioned over here P1 and in the next line I have mentioned the address of X is equal to P2 and just see the output whether the address is same or different. Address of X is equal to this and same address of X is equal to this. Suppose you want to print the value at X with the help of pointer, the value at X. value at x. How will you come to know that value at x? I will just just admit, I will initialize it to some value, suppose 20. First way is to with the help of that variable that is x. And just see value of value at x is equal to 20. We have accessed this value 20 with the help of variable name that we have visually usually access the value. Now I'm going to access this value using the pointer. Value at x is equal to I'm going to say star p1. Because this P1 will hold the value of X and this star P1 nothing but the value at P1 nothing but the value at memory location present in P1 that is value is 20. Just see the output. It will print value at X is equal to 20. Now this P2 is also pointing to P1. And with the help of P2, you can access the value present in the X. Just see the statement. See out value at X is equal to P2. Value at P2 and just see the value. You will print the same value. This value present in X will be accessed using the variable name, using the first pointer and using the second pointer. And this is the way to access the value present in the X. And this is the way to access the address present at the X location. So this is about the assignment operator. Moving forward, I'm going to explain about uh, this double pointer. So this is a single, simple code. What is present in this code? <coughs> we have variable integer x. This is our first pointer and this is the pointer pointer variable. And this x is equal to 10 and p is equal to address of x. Now address of X will be held by P and address of P will be held by Q. And with the help of this value of X is equal to you can access using this pointer double star Q. And just see the value. Value of X is equal to 10. With the help of this double pointer, you can access the value at present in the X. Similarly, just see 
well of x is equal to if i mention here well q star p and just see the output well of x is equal to 10 with the help of this star p you can access the value present in the x with the help of double pointer pointer to pointer you can access this x. and you can also access the value at x using the variable name that we have seen just mention name of the variable is x and just see the output this is our output, output. value of x is equal to 10 10 10 and all the values we have accessed using the pointers here it is we have accessed this using the double pointer we have accessed this using the single pointer and we have accessed this using the variable itself so this is about double pointer to pointer so moving forward pointer to objects A variable that holds an address value is called a pointer variable or simply pointer. A variable that holds an address value is called a pointer variable or it is simply a pointer. A pointer can point to objects as well as to simple data types and arrays. C++ allows you to have pointers to objects. You can have pointers to the objects. The pointers pointing to object as referred to as, it is also called as object pointers, or it is also called as pointer to objects. So how to declare this pointer to objects, or object to pointers? Just like other pointers, the object pointers are declared by placing in front of the object pointers name and it takes the following general form. This is the class name star object pointer. Where class name is the name of the already defined class and object pointer is the pointer to the object of this class type. For example, to declare the OP, o pointer as an object pointer of the sample class type, class type, we shall write sample star OPTR, where sample is already defined class. When accessing members of the class using the object pointer, we use the arrow operator. This is the arrow operator it is used instead of dot operator once you create the object just see with the help of demonstration so that you will get the idea so is this uh, code is visible yes anybody Yes, sir. Okay, fine. So I will show you how to create the pointer to object. This is our class time. These are the three variables we have created of type short integer. In the public, we have written the constructor time. We have one method get data, which will initialize our minutes and seconds to the value i, j, and k. And we have one method that is spring data, which will print our minutes and seconds. And just see what we have created. We have created one uh, time object T1. This is the normal object we have created. And then the star TPTR is the pointer 
to the object. It is pointer to the object and this is the way to create the pointer to object. This is the way to create the pointer to object. So say out initializing data members using the object with the values 11, 12, 22, and 11. This is the way normally we have created t one dot get data and we have passed these values. To print it using the object t1, normally we have used it object dot the print data. Now what we have created here, we have stored the address of T1 into the pointer TPTR. We have stored the address of T1 into the address TPTR. And now we are operating henceforth using this TPTR and just see how to make use of this TPTR pointer. So printing the data member using the object pointer. So TPTR and then you have to mention arrow and then print data. It will print the, it will call this print data method. Initializing the data members using the object pointers, this TPTR arrow, arrow is used to get, to access this get data. And we have used this arrow because this is the TPTR is a pointer. And just pass this value 15, 10, and 16. And then printing the data, t1 dot print data, and you can do this using the dot operator as well as this arrow operator. Dot operator with the help of object, arrow operator with the help of pointer to object. And this is the way to create the pointer to object. And just see the output of the code. Just a minute. Let me save this code. Yes, so this is the output. Initializing the data member using the object with the values this 10, 20, 12, 22, and 11. Printing the member using the object. This is the time. Printing the member using the object pointer. This is the time. And initializing the data member using the object pointer with the values 15, 10, and 16, and printing the member using the object and printing the member using the object pointer. And this is the way to create object to pointer. This is the way to create the object to pointer. Just mention, create the object to pointer like this, time, start it there and just create one object T1 and hold the address of this T1 address, T1 object into the pointer, TPTR. So this is called as pointer to object. So this is the last uh, point. This point. This is quite interesting also. This pointer is pointing to the current state of the object. Give me some few more minutes. To understand this pointer, it is important to know how objects look at functions and data members of the class. So each object gets its own copy of the data member. Each object sorry, get its own copy of the data member. And next, access the same function, same function definition as present in the code segment. So this will access the same function definition as present in the code segment. What is the meaning of it? Meaning each object gets its own copy of the data members and all objects share a single copy of member functions. Then the question is that if only one of 
one of each member function exists and is used by multiple objects, how are the proper data members are accessed and updated? The compiler supplies an implicit pointer along with the name of the function as this. And this is the pointer. The name of the pointer the name is this. The this pointer is passed as a hidden argument to all non-static member function calls and is available as a local variable within the body of all non-static functions. And this pointer is not available in static member function as static member function can be called without any object. For a class X, the type of this pointer is X star. Also, if the data member of X is declared as constant, then the type of this pointer is constant X star. So simply, just see uses of this pointer. Again, this pointer in different words. This pointer holds the address of current object. Keep in mind, this pointer holds the address of current object. In simple words, you can say that this pointer points to the current object of the class. And in C++ programming, this keyword re that refers to the current instance of the class. So these are the uses of the this keyword. It can be used to pass current object as parameter to another method. It can be used to refer current class instance variable and it can be used to declare the indexers. Just with the help of example, demonstration, we are going to learn about the this pointer. So this is the simple code. First of all, see the output. This is the simple output. It will show this uh, information about Sono and Nakul. And but just see how we have, we have used this point. Class employee, we have created. There is three variables, ID, name, and salary. And in the constructor, we have received ID, name, and uh, float salary. And we have used this pointer like this. This, then arrow, and then name of the variable. This ID belongs to this class ID, and this ID belongs to this variable integer ID. To differentiate between this ID, this ID, and this ID, we have used this pointer and this is the way to use the, this pointer. You have to mention this. This is a keyword in C++ used to denote uh, this keyword, this pointer. This then arrow ID is equal to ID. Similarly, this arrow name is equal to name. This salary is equal to salary. And this is the way we have used this pointer. And this pointer is pointed to the current object. In the display, we have just displayed the ID name and salary. We have created two objects, employee E1, E2. We have passed these values. Automatically, constructor will receive it. It will initialize to respective ID name salary object using this pointer. And then it will display the output. So simply, it will display the output like this. This is the name of the employees, Sono and Nakul. Okay. 